the National Summer School, you need to be either a graduate student or a postdoc. Because I am explaining that the, the idea of the curriculum is more than uh, to, to understand the classes. It's all uh, that we uh, have in our, for instance, university. That means uh, what we are doing here yes. is part of our curriculum. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's more than the classes, more than this. And our researchers also it is part of the curriculum, and research, I think, is one of the areas where individual faculty can have a huge impact by um, working with their students and making sure they're doing that sort of mental check about using the guidelines to look at what they're doing in terms of a process or product. And you know, what, what are the energy requirements? Can they be using a safer solvent? Do they need a solvent at all? Where's your starting material coming from? I mean, all of those questions, I think, play into uh, the whole research picture. So that, that has a big one. And then the other thing, uh, and you, I think, alluded to it when we were at the Congress, is what's happening on many campuses around the world is they're taking sustainability you know, beyond the classroom, and it's to the facilities, it's to uh, the, the programs, it's how waste is handled, co-generation of energy. So it's really looking at the campus as sort of an ecosystem. And then how do you make that self-contained and sustainable? So all of that, I think, feeds into each other. And, and designing new buildings. We're seeing a lot of this on campuses now, that as new buildings go up, and the one you showed me today. Yes, yes, using natural lighting as much as possible, you know, capturing rainwater, things like that. So those are all part of the whole sustainability ethic. I think we'll be the future. Yes, yeah, I think so too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and one one of the things that the summer school Philip Jessup usually comes, uh, who, you know, who and he's just wonderful from Green Center Canada and Queen's University. So he does a modified life cycle assessment, and the students break up into groups, and they've got you know two or three different you know simple transformations they're looking at from some of those uh, metrics I showed up there, you know, global warming potential, acidification potential, uh, ecotox, things like that. And that is often the first time students have really had any sort of introduction. And it's a very condensed version of it. But a couple of years ago, one of the students there was, um, that was so powerful to her that she introduced an entire chapter into her, her PhD thesis, looking at the, me the, um, the, life, uh, the LCA of, of her research. And I thought that was incredible, that she really took that um, to heart to really apply what she learned there to the research you've been carrying out. And so certainly, you know, collaborations among colleagues who have expertise in different aspects of green chemistry, engineering, and sustainability would be, um, I think, a really terrific way to start building those connections and expand the expertise of both the faculty and the students. So, you know, if you want to expand more your ideas to, to think in a different uh, way how the program would be. Um, you know, uh, what I mean, and uh, the first case, they, they, most of the students at least, they don't ask how it costs, how my thesis costs. And uh, when we are talking about the cost of the thesis, we are talking about the, the waste we generate, the, the equipment that we use and they need the power that frees the, to, to work and then spend. And uh, I'm, 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 I'm thinking about to start to ask them yes. to, to take care how it costs. Mm -hmm. Not to make less experience, but uh, to
to take care how it costs. Right. And uh, uh, this is the first point. And then the second point, when I uh, realized that it costs something to the world and uh, mm -hmm. the rate waste, uh, how can I improve the way I work? In my opinion, but uh, you know, this is this is specific, it's not general. Uh, I think that chemometrics can help us too much mm -hmm. because you can decrease in a very uh, strong way the number of experiments you need to conclude, to right. think about your uh, experiments, and also you have new tools to to think about reasons. You know, mm -hmm. the one thing is to to use factorial design and to to. To rationalize the number of experiments, and the second one is to have new tools to analyze the results you got. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that this is like, the two starting points mm -hmm. about the green stamp. I think that green stamp is the, a good name mm -hmm. in Portuguese. Sound uh, good for us. Silus <laughs> uh, uh, Oh yes. Uh, green stamps to to be considered to those students. We uh, got the, the care about oh, yeah, yeah. cancer. Yeah. I think that's a terrific idea. I mean, one of the things, you know, when you're in lab, I mean, what, what do you do? You just dump your waste into the, the big jugs in the hood, and then at some point the, the lab gnomes come in and remove it, and, you know, nobody ever thinks about that anymore. And there is a cost. It costs more to dispose of the waste than it does to buy the chemicals themselves. And so having students, uh, you know, uh, quantify the waste and identify what type of waste I think is a very um, good idea because it is going to make them then think about what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's green chemistry is an approach. I mean, it's, it's something, is, it's not, even though the examples I gave, many of them are from organic chemistry, it's an approach that's applicable to all areas of chemistry because we are creating environmental problems Maybe not so much with computational, <laughs> uh, although we've got electrons, but, um, and you've got all the materials that go into that. But it, it is, there are, there are issues associated with the practice of chemistry, but simply because of the nature of experimentation. And so trying to instill that approach, that green chemistry and sustainability approach into students through things like this is a wonderful way to do so. Mary, in your opinion, uh, how fast uh, do you think well, I think um, I think the idea of sustainability is probably a little easier because I think to understand green chemistry, you can get sort of the big concepts, but to really understand it, you have to understand some chemistry to understand why it would be greener. So I think the sustainability concepts um, are probably. Uh, easier for people without that, that chemistry background to understand. But I think, um, you know, again, going back to what I said earlier, I think it's uh, important, though, to help people understand the role that chemistry must play in achieving sustainability. Because we do need, because we are the molecular designers, we are the ones who are going to have to take responsibility for designing those molecules in a way that is less harmful to human health and the environment. So I think, I think those are the concepts that people, regardless of whether or not they, they've had any chemistry, can really grasp that chemistry really can provide solutions to these global challenges.